Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Whether we like it or not, OpenAI's API is one of the most commonly used API in production environments across the globe at the moment. Every organization at the enterprise level more or less uses the same API. Even if they are not using OpenAI's models, still they use OpenAI's compatible APIs. And that is why whatever happens in OpenAI's API has far-reaching impacts. And the good thing is that OpenAI keep evolving and innovating this API. Just recently, they have announced this structured outputs in the API. They already have JSON output, by the way, and we covered it in our previous video. But the thing which they have come up this time is that they have also produce this API feature where we can now be certain that the structured output which it is going to give us would be according to our own data model or it would be validated and then we can also test it out. The thing is that generating structured data from unstructured input is one of the most commonly used use cases for AI in today's applications and as I mentioned in the enterprises. Developers use the OpenAI's API to build powerful assistants that have the ability to fetch data and answer questions via function calling, extract structured data from for data entry, and there are a lot of other use cases, especially when it comes to agentic software. Now, another thing around this structured um, output feature is that it solves the problem of making sure that the model's output always confirms to the format needed by the application so that we will have interoperability with our existing applications. And that is where this structured output comes very handy. We will also create a code and then we will run it with this open API, API in this example. And I'm also going to give you that code so, th so that you could just simply copy paste. So structured output solves the problem by constraining OpenAI models to match developer supplied schemas and by training the models to better understand complicated schemas. There is a lot of information which they have shared around benchmarking and some of the figures which you can check out in this blog post and I will drop the link to it in video's description. Now let me take you to my VS code where I will be showing you how you can use this code. Now, first step you need to do, if you already have installed OpenAI or even if not, make sure that you run this command. This is going to install or upgrade OpenAI's SDK or software development kit on your local system. And it is also going to install this Pydentic library. I will also explain what exactly this Pydentic library is shortly. Now, what this code is doing, this code is making sure that it is going to take our natural language query it is going to give it to model and then whatever the response of model would be this code is going to make sure that the response will confirm or will according to the data model defined by us okay or the data format you can say now first up we are importing some of the libraries and you can see that this is the OpenAI's library and this is where we are importing enum and base model from Pydantic. Enum is a way in Python to define a set of named values. And we will shortly see what exactly enum is when we go down. For instance, um, if you look here, we are defining two enums here. One is account type and one is transaction type. So we are defining two named values here. For example, we are saying that whenever there will be a count type, it will have only two values. It could be either checking or it could be saving. So basically we are defining the account type in our financial uh, company that we can have only these two, nothing else. So we are making sure that our data confirms to this with the help of enum. Similarly, we are only specifying that transaction type could be deposit or withdrawal. So this is another enum, which is going to make sure that we have only um, these set of named values. That's it. So 
this enum account type defines two values checking and savings and this enum transaction type defines two values deposit and withdrawal then we have pydantic which we are importing after installation pydantic is a python library that allows you to define data models using python type hints but data models or data format same thing it is not an ai model pydantic provides feature like data validation serialization and deserialization now in this code what we are doing here if i scroll down we are defining three pydantic data models dynamic value condition and query dynamic value is a data model that represents a dynamic value with a single attribute account number that's it it couldn't be anything else and that is what we are trying to make sure then we are defining condition condition represents three attributes account type transaction type or it could be amount and we, here we can set different conditions okay the amount of account could be uh, shouldn't be less than hundred dollars otherwise there will be no account something like that just as per your own applications logic and then we have another data model query that represents a query with two attributes account number and the conditions so basically we are combining this account number with this condition and when we say base model base model is the base class provided by pydentic for defining data models when you create a class that inherits from the base model such as this one this one and this one uh, this uh, what happens is that pydentic automatically generates features like data validation serialization and deserialization for the inherited class in this code all these three data models dynamic value conditions and query inherit from the base model and then we are instantiating our open AI's client now because we are using open AI so you would need to go to platform.openai.com and from there you would need to grab your open AI's API key and that is a paid option so make sure you grab it and then you can set it in your code in your environment variable like export open AI underscore API underscore key and that should uh, enable you to access this model in our case I'm going with GPT-4 or this one now <clears throat> what I'm doing here is I'm just first this is a prompt template where we are telling the AI or the model what it what it's supposed to do so for example I'm telling it you're a helpful assistant the current date is August 6 you help users um, query for their bank account transactions and the user is saying show me all with show me all my withdrawals from my checking account in July now of course I have hard coded these just for to show you the example but you will be passing it as an input or as a parameter from here we are calling this a pydentic function tool uh, and then it is just accessing that query object from that class and then I am uh, getting the results back so let me run it and then show you what it says so let me go a little bit up and then we'll see the output and I'm expecting um, the Python output of course there you go so you see it's, it has just made up some numbers account number is this this is a condition and this is basically a function call which you can pass to your application because look function calling means that you give something in natural language to model model converts into a function signature which means I mean function name and its parameters and then it you can call that function through your application uh, through your this application and then primarily you're integrating your legacy or existing applications with LLM so that is what is uh, happening here and now we have this facility of making sure whatever model is returning is confirming to our applications data model and that is why I believe this is a really really groundbreaking stuff and as we know that a lot of other open source free models also use open AI's compatible API such as Olama, LM Studio and there are heaps of others so I'm hoping that they're also going to embed this awesome feature into their uh, APIs. So that's it guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what do you think. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.